John Wilkes Booth, born in Maryland into a family of prominent stage actors, was a famous actor and national celebrity in his own right. He was also an outspoken Confederate sympathizer. In March 1864, Ulysses S. Grant, commander of the Union armies, suspended the exchange of prisoners of war with the Confederate army to increase pressure on the manpower-starved South. Booth conceived a plan to kidnap Lincoln in order to blackmail the Union into resuming prisoner exchanges, and recruited Samuel Arnold, George Atzerodt, David Harold, Michael O'Loughlin, Lewis Powell, and John Surratt to help him. On March 17, Booth and the other conspirators planned to abduct Lincoln as he returned from a play at Campbell General Hospital in Northwest Washington. But Lincoln did not go to the play, instead attending a ceremony at the National Hotel. On April 9, General Robert E. Lee and his Army of Northern Virginia surrendered to General Ulysses S. Grant and his Army of the Potomac after the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse. Nevertheless, Booth continued to believe in the Confederate cause and sought a way to salvage it. On April 14, Booth's morning started at midnight. He wrote his mother that all was well but that he was in haste. In his diary, he wrote that, our cause being almost lost, something decisive and great must be done. While visiting Ford's theater around noon to pick up his mail, Booth learned that Lincoln and Grant were to visit the theater that evening for a performance of Our American Cousin. This provided him with an especially good opportunity to attack Lincoln, having performed there several times, he knew the theater's layout and was familiar to its staff. Booth went to Mary Surratt's boarding house in Washington, D.C., and asked her to deliver a package to her tavern in Surrettsville, Maryland. He also asked her to tell her tenant Louis J. Weichmann to ready the guns and ammunition that Booth had previously stored at the tavern. Booth planned to shoot Lincoln at point-blank range with his single-shot Philadelphia Derringer pistol and then stab Grant at the theater. According to Ward Hill Lamont, three days before his death, Lincoln related a dream in which he wandered the White House searching for the source of mournful sounds. However, Lincoln went on to tell Lamont that, in this dream it was not me, but some other fellow, that was killed. For these days Lincoln had looked pale and haggard, but on the morning of the assassination he told people how happy he was. Despite what Booth had heard earlier in the day, Grant and his wife, Julia Grant, had declined to accompany the Lincolns, as Mary Lincoln and Julia Grant were not on good terms. Lincoln's footman, William H. Crook, advised him not to go, but Lincoln said he had promised his wife. The presidential party arrived late and settled into their box. The play was interrupted, and the orchestra played, Hail to the Chief, as the full house of some 1,700 rose in applause. Lincoln sat in a rocking chair that had been selected for him from among the Ford family's personal furnishings. With Crook off duty and Ward Hill Lamont away, policeman John Frederick Parker was assigned to guard the presidential box. Booth entered Ford's theater one last time at about 10.10 p.m., this time through the theater's front entrance. He passed through the dress circle and went to the door that led to the presidential box after showing Charles Forbes his calling card. Once inside the hallway, Booth barricaded the door by wedging a stick between it and the wall. From here, a second door led to Lincoln's box. Booth knew the play Our American Cousin by heart and waited to time his shot at about 10.15 p.m., with the laughter at one of the hilarious lines of the play, delivered by actor Harry Hawk. Lincoln was laughing at this line, when Booth opened the door, stepped forward, and shot Lincoln from behind with his pistol. The bullet entered Lincoln's skull behind his left ear, passed through his brain, and came to rest near the front of the skull after fracturing both orbital plates. Lincoln slumped over in his chair and then fell backward. Rathbone turned to see Booth standing in gunsmoke less than four feet behind Lincoln. Booth shouted a word that Rathbone thought sounded like, freedom. Rathbone jumped from his seat and struggled with Booth, who dropped the pistol and drew a knife with which he stabbed Rathbone in the left forearm. Rathbone again grabbed at Booth as he prepared to jump from the box to the stage, a 12-foot drop. Immediately after Booth landed on the stage, Major Joseph B. Stewart climbed over the orchestra pit and footlights and pursued Booth across the stage. Booth exited the theater through a side door, 
en route stabbing orchestra leader William Withers, Jr. Charles Leal, a young Union Army surgeon, pushed through the crowd to the door of the presidential box. Leal found Lincoln seated with his head leaning to his right as Mary held him and sobbed. And he was in a profoundly comatose condition, while his breathing was intermittent and exceedingly stertorous. Another physician, Charles Sabin Taft, was lifted into the box from the stage. After Leal and bystander William Kent cut away Lincoln's collar while unbuttoning his coat and shirt and found no stab wound, Leal located the gunshot wound behind the left ear. He found the bullet too deep to be removed but dislodged a blood clot, after which Lincoln's breathing improved. Finding that Lincoln was cold, they applied hot water bottles and mustard plasters while covering his cold body with blankets. Later, more physicians arrived. Surgeon General Joseph K. Barnes, Charles Henry Crane, Anderson Ruffin Abbott, and Robert K. Stone, Lincoln's personal physician. All agreed Lincoln could not survive. Barnes probed the wound, locating the bullet and some bone fragments. Throughout the night, as the hemorrhage continued, they removed blood clots to relieve pressure on the brain, and Leal held the comatose president's hand with a firm grip to let him know that he was in touch with humanity and had a friend. Lincoln's older son Robert Todd Lincoln arrived at about 11 p.m., but 12-year-old Tad Lincoln, who was watching a play of Aladdin at Grover's Theater when he learned of his father's assassination, was kept away. Initially, Lincoln's features were calm and his breathing slow and steady. Later, one of his eyes became swollen and the right side of his face discolored. As he neared death, Lincoln's appearance became perfectly natural, except for the discoloration around his eyes. Shortly before 7 a.m. Mary was allowed to return to Lincoln's side, and, as Dixon reported, she again seated herself by the president, kissing him and calling him every endearing name. Lincoln died at 7.22 a.m. on April 15. Mary Lincoln was not present. In his last moments, Lincoln's face became calm and his breathing quieter. Field wrote there was no apparent suffering, no convulsive action, no rattling of the throat. L. Only a mere cessation of breathing. According to Lincoln's secretary John Hay, at the moment of Lincoln's death, a look of unspeakable peace came upon his worn features. The assembly knelt for a prayer, after which Stanton said either, now he belongs to the ages, or, now he belongs to the angels. Before dawn on April 26, the soldiers caught up with the fugitives, who were hiding in Garrett's tobacco barn. David Harold surrendered, but Booth refused Conger's demand to surrender saying, I prefer to come out and fight. The soldiers then set the barn on fire. As Booth moved about inside the blazing barn, Sergeant Boston Corbett shot him. Booth, fatally wounded in the neck, was dragged from the barn to the porch of Garrett's farmhouse, where he died three hours later. Mary Surratt, Lewis Powell, David Harold, and George Atzerodt were sentenced to death by hanging. Samuel Mudd, Samuel Arnold, and Michael O'Loughlin were sentenced to life in prison. Edmund Spangler was sentenced to six years for helping Booth in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and if you like the video please do give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.